Welcome back to another episode of The Scoreboard. This is the USFL, week four. The XFL is currently on break this week. They have their sort of, I guess you would call it the Pro Bowl uh, break, though they don't really have that. Not enough teams in the XFL to have a Pro Bowl. Um, But the championship game will be next week. So this week, only USFL, week four. We have some good ones, some interesting ones. And... uh, I need some more excuses and justifications about why the Philly Stars are still winning the North later. But first of all, Smokey, how are you doing? Oh, man. Well, I'm going to do this just to appease you because I know you want to hear this. I am doing better (laughs) than Stars fans right now because it looks like the sky is falling right now. Their offensive line is so bad. They're going to have to start doing some trades. Like you, You need more guys in there because that offensive line you have right now is going to put you under 500 by the end of the season. That is horrible. You lost to the worst team in the entire USFL. All of last season and so far this season, the Maulers are the worst team. You lost to them because your offensive line is that bad. And Case Cook is is getting beat. He's not going to make it past the middle of the season getting beat up like that. So they're going to have to fix that. So right now, I will say I am better than Stars fans. Although there are other teams in this league right now who are having troubles and there was some huge upsets that is oh yeah i see what you're going at Mm -hmm. i don't know if a two and two and oh versus two and oh is like a huge upset it's more of an upset than like losing to the damn maulers Mm -hmm. i don't know about that uh and yes of course i wanted to hear you say that though can you say that like are you allowed to say you're better than stars fan star stars fans whenever you're a stars fan well yes i can because right now i am separating myself from the stars if they're gonna (laughs) play like this i don't need to be anywhere near the stars no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding i I mean they're still my favorite team because i chose them and i can't just bandwagon i'm not gonna you can't just yeah i'm not i'm not gonna go to uh well i don't even want the panthers after this week man i mean i kind of like josh love but uh, that was a bad week that was another upset right there and and uh, I, I don't know how it's looking for the rest of the season. Maybe this was just a fluke week, and we're going to get back on track starting with week four, and maybe it'll all play out perfectly. It might have been. Uh, one thing I have to ask before we get into week four, though, and I don't want to ask it, but because <laughs> it's not it's not going to look so well like on our record, but how are uh, how are the standings? Not good. Not good, because after those great two weeks we had, last week was absolutely horrible. We picked the Stallions lost we picked the gamblers one okay that's great uh we picked the stars lost we picked the panthers lost yeah that was a bad (laughs) week so we added one point for each of us to our total mine is 12 yours is 13 we can't have any more weeks like that going forward not if we want to go 75 percent for the for the whole season definitely not gotta pick it up i think this week's actually pretty difficult at least there's two games that i'm not super sure about so we'll see but starting off with (laughs) one of the games i didn't think i would be unsure about but am gamblers at the stars yeah i understand exactly what you're saying uh i don't know if the stars are going to be able to fix this i I think they need some trades we we got to get some new people in here we need some new offensive line if we're going to turn this around because like i said right now we're going below 500 with this offensive line if if your quarterback and he's a scrambling quarterback he's getting killed out there that offensive line is absolutely the worst in the usfl now let's talk about the gamblers for a second they got their win uh one of very few you would think they have especially after last season when they kept letting you down over and over and over again but kenji bahar got a win uh kenji was not awful 61 percent like not bad you did what you had to do it was against a poor showboats team so the it is what it is i think the showboats may actually be the worst team in the league at this time they may have stole that from the the maulers there justin hall was good once again they were using the tight end which i always love to see josh peterson um curtis johnson's probably really happy that this team has a win uh i'll talk a little more about the stars matt colburn was okay um nothing to write home about um this split backfield is 
and uh, like I said, if they're not gonna fix the old line, the, the running game's not gonna work that well. Anyway, Corey Coleman probably the top, he's probably in the top three best wide receivers in this league. But if you can't give them time, then uh, it's not gonna make a lot of connections downfield. Although they tried, I, I will give them that. They took a lot of shots downfield. Um, Corey Coleman actually ended up with eight receptions for 86 yards and a touchdown. That seemed like the only shining spot. Uh, DeAndre Overton, maybe. Uh, Bart Andrus, this is to you. Fix that O-line or I will not be picking you. Uh, as a matter of fact, right now, I'm going to go with the momentum. I I'm, I'm mad at the stars, so I'll take the gamblers <laughs> on the road. Wow. Um I was see. I was hoping that you pick the stars, mm -hmm. make the same mistake I made with the gamblers last <laughs> uh, last season, and sink points into them endlessly. Yeah. And then I was gonna come like over the top and pick the gamblers on you, right? One interesting fact here is that the stars are two and a half point favorites, and they play at home. So uh, on a neutral field, the gamblers are actually getting half a point, and I can see why because the stars are such a like such a one man show, mm -hmm. uh, which we have seen not work last year in this same league. In fact, the um, Tampa Bay Bandits are no longer in existence. That's how bad they were last uh, last year, uh, running a one man show with uh, with Jordan Tamu. And the Stars are on the verge of going down that path as well. And luckily for them, the Panthers lost as well. So it doesn't look too out of reach just yet. But week five is next week, and that's half the season. So you can't you can't mess around for too long. Uh, you can't fall behind for too much. Stars have to win it. And um, I'm going to pick the Stars, I think. I'll pick them because wow. you didn't. <laughs> wow. I wanted this to be the game where I get a, where I make a point on you i wanted it to be the other way around of course picking against against the stars you sticking with them because that would have been doubly satisfying if i won the bet but now i have to go with the stars and um come up with a reason for why i do because i don't really have a good one honestly this is a very close game it's, it's not supposed to be but if case Cocos can maybe get back to more of what we've seen from him late last season where he did elevate this team over mediocre competition. I think he can win it. Not as confident in that as I'd like to be, but I'm going to take the Stars. Also, the Stars and Maulers game. I don't know, but to me it felt like by far the longest football game I've ever watched. Hmm. I don't know why, but it, it felt like it took five hours. <laughs> really? It was bad. It was bad TV. Maybe it's because <laughs> like right after... I started watching the Sea Dragons Defenders and then Game 7 of the Warriors Kings literally like ne on two screens next to each other. Mm -hmm. And it was like there was never like a, a second of nothing happening. Yeah. But that, that game before then was, whew, that was a snail's pace. It's like that the, was a rough. The difference when you go from red zone to actually watching Monday Night Football or Sunday Night Football. You know, yes. Like, Why is this game oh. taking so long? <laughs> There's advertisements. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And timeouts. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Yeah, that that's exactly what that felt like. Oh yeah. But the whole game. Okay, so I'll take the stars. Wow. We have the boats at the Panthers. Mm-hmm. Two bad weeks for both of these teams. I will say I like that Cole Kelly went over three hundred yards, which is almost like a rare feat for a spring league football quarterbacks to go over three hundred yards, but it's happened multiple times already in the USFL this year. Not so much last year, and not so much in the XFL except for a few quarterbacks or one or two of them. But here, Cole Kelly did it, of all people. Alex Collins, the maybe, actually with the injuries, maybe the best running back in the league right now. Uh, Osiris Mitchell and Byron McDonald did their thing in the loss, but so did the Panthers. Um, looking over here, I'm trying to figure out what exactly would give me the inspiration to go back to the Panthers now. Other than the Showboats may just be the worst team in the league, which is also really bad for the Stars because they barely beat the Showboats. But uh, no more Stars. I'm tired of the Stars. Um, Josh Love came back down to earth. 15 for 31. That was bad. That was really bad, bro. 
Uh, zero touchdowns, one interceptions. That stat line is horrible. I am no longer saying he's, uh, what did I call him, Mr. USFL or, or the MVP candidate. He did. He uh, called it a yeah, yeah, I, I give up on that. Uh, however, I like the, the running back duo of Stevie Scott and Reggie Corbin. That's a great two-headed monster out of the backfield. And my favorite wide receiver in this league, Trey Quinn, along with Cole Hecatini, a tight end. I love tight ends. I'm going to say it every time. Mike Nolan's got this team in a good position to win as long as you don't have too many more weeks like last week. And the showboats are bad. I'll take the Panthers at home. Ah, oh, Panthers to win. Yeah. I mean, what you want me to say? Alex Collins can be the best running back in the league by name only. And I mean by name only. He averaged negative 0.2 yards per carry for a total of negative two yards <laughs> in this game um the quarterback's the leading rusher by far and you total uh 21 rushing yards for the whole game scored 26 points for some reason so maybe there's like a case cook situation developing where you sort of have that the one man show with the boats but oh the one no no, no the one man boats We'll call him because there's still no show in that team at all. Until they win a game, we can't call him that. Uh, Panthers win. The Panthers can at least run the ball. Memphis doesn't seem like they can do anything very well at this point. And yeah, it doesn't bode well for the Stars because they just about snuck by these boats. And we thought, man, the boat, the, the showboats might be good. Uh, they took the Stars to damn near overtime. Uh, it turns out the Stars are just bad. But so are the boats, maybe even slightly more so, so... Panthers win at home. I'm curious to see the attendance of this game, by the way, because you have a huge stadium uh, available to you. I think when they were hosting the Generals, the attendance looked pretty good to me, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty much the whole lower floor of Fort Field was filled up. Yeah. So let's see if they can keep that up. Maybe suddenly the Panthers, who have exactly zero fans all of last year, <laughs> like the most disinterested team of all time. Shea Patterson's mm -hmm. family was out there. Oh, pro probably, yeah, because they got the tickets for free. Yeah. Nothing, nothing better to do, I guess. <laughs> uh, it would have been an awkward dinner table situation if they didn't show up after a chance, I guess. But, uh, that's probably the only reason why. Um, yeah, suddenly people want to watch the want to watch the Panthers, which yeah. can't blame them. Yeah, they have potential. Breakers at the Generals. Mm-hmm. Um... And uh, just to make it clear, I, or I may have made that sound a, a little weird earlier. Alex Collins is the most accomplished running back yes. in this league. There you go. But not the best because right here is the best in West West Hills. This guy is on fire. If you watch him play, I did not expect this Breakers team to be this good. But West Hills is on fire, and McLeod Bethel Thompson is doing wonderful things at quarterback. This. This is giving Alex Magoo a run right here, man. That this team is really good. They just come off the win over you guys. So uh, this may be your South Championship matchup right here, right now. Jonathan Adams looked good. Um, uh, another tight end usage, Sage Surratt. I'm going to call out every tight end that gets usage. Uh, John D. Filippo's got this team running the only undefeated team. Now the generals also look good. DeAndre Johnson looks good. Darius Victor looks good. Cameron Eccles Looper looks really good, man. Um, this is this game of the week right here. It has to be, right? Uh, so this makes it tough. Should I go with the undefeated team or go with the team that has a lot of momentum that only made a stumble in the first week? Um, you know what? And, until they lose, I have to keep picking them. I'll go with the breakers on the road. Yeah, it's hard not to. Though I'm a bit impressed by the Generals, actually, because they won a game that we did not expect yes. them to. And they won it relatively convincingly. And um, if you ask me now who's the number one team in the North, can you really say Michigan? I don't know. This might be... This right This right here might be the number one team in the North, number one team in the South right now. This might be the odds-on favorite for the Uf USFL Championship. I still, I still believe the Stallions are... Uh, when it all comes down to stats, so the best team in the league, uh, talent-wise, they just slipped up. But um, it's 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 entirely possible. So if we did power rankings, we can do power rankings after if you want. Hard not putting these at one and two right now. So it is a tough game to pick. And by the way, the Bethel Thompson thing, 
Mm-hmm. I know you're trying to flip it in a way where oh, he's competing with your guy, yeah. but I'm, I said that too last week. You said you said George Love. I said if there's I a, if I have to give you a second guy, it's gonna be Bethel Thompson. Yeah, because um, he's that like the veteran, right? He he really knows what he's doing, and you can tell it it come through like it did with AJ McCarron. He's just almost no mistakes. He's playing very methodically. Um. Because he's he's seen everything that they can throw at him, and spending so many years in the NFL, the USFL game probably comes very naturally, very slowly to him as well, because it processes so fast, so much faster from what he's seen. Um, so he's playing very well, as expected. The offense is churning out massive points. I mean, hanging forty five on on Birmingham is not something I wanted to see, but I was definitely I was definitely blown away by it. And with that, I, I yeah, picked the Breakers as well. I think it's very hard not to take them. Um, Given what they just did to the prohibitive favorites of the entire league, mm-hmm. uh, I think that's the only right choice you can you can make at the moment. So, breakers to keep doing what they are doing. First week, probably just a slip up when they just about eked out a win, and that snooze fest against the Maulers, and we're about to lose. We're not for I think goal line stand. No, that was that was a that was the Maulers actually who scored a safety or a defensive touchdown. It was a bad game. Ever since then, they've gotten better. So the Breakers, Breakers win this one as well. And finally, Stallions at the Maulers. Yeah, um, one team's coming off of a win, and one team's coming off of a loss. Oh it's, yeah, it's not okay. The ones, Go with that. Go with that logic. Would expect, uh, <laughs> I mean, Alex Magoo looked decent. You know, seventeen for twenty-six, two hundred thirty-eight yards. Two touchdowns, one interception. QBR, 104. That's not a bad stat line for a spring quarterback. I mean, it's not McLeod Bethel Thompson numbers of last week, but it's not bad. I mean, the the crazy thing about this team, though, this year is that they're not running the ball like they were. Like, last year, it was all about running. C.J. Marable, and then when Bo Scarborough got there, this was a running team, and you had a dual-three quarterback that could run after Mago went out. So, uh, CJ Marable and Zaquan J. Wright, we've seen them earlier in the season. That They are absolutely capable, but they're just not doing it right now. I mean, maybe that's just a, uh, a symptom of not having to. Davion Davis is doing great things, and Jay Sternberger was once again the best tight end on the field because, as a matter of fact, you know what? I, I looked it up, and let me pull up there. Uh, um, Thaddeus Moss is either, was let's see, um, injured reserve, uh, inactive roster. For some reason, Thaddeus Moss is not on injured reserve right now. He's on inactive roster. I was wondering why he wasn't out there this week, but yeah, maybe, maybe they're just sticking with Jace Sternberger and, you know, Thaddeus Moss is in reserve right now or something happened there, but he was absolutely usable and. Uh, it's a shame, but <clears throat> over on the Mahler's side, Troy Williams, you know, he looked decent. Uh, he's not throwing the ball a lot, that's for dang sure. But on his very few attempts, he looked halfway decent. No interceptions, that's good, right? Um, <clears throat> Garrett Groshak and Madre London, they're two top running backs, of course. Isaiah Henney, and mostly passing to the RBs, but that's probably because Troy Wilson- Williams doesn't have that big of an arm. Ray Horton is happy about their win, but unfortunately, it's not going to happen again this week. I'll be taking the Stallions on the road. Yeah, so let's let's settle down here. Let's get back down to earth a little bit. <laughs> if I told you before the season that the Pittsburgh Maulers were going to sweep the Stars and Stallions in back-to-back weeks... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, no, 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 no. That, that it, we're not in a bizarro world here just yet. What like uh, lightning? Lightning strikes once in this case. <laughs> um, the the stallions are gonna win this. They're gonna recover from this. Uh, it was not an offensive problem at all. Obviously, they scored thirty one points, which should be enough in any case to win a game. It was simply that uh, yes, they sure. had no answer. They had no answer for the breakers' offense at all through the air. Uh, and on the ground, and then um, of course, trailing for most of the game and being in that hole, um, the Stallions never established a run game. They had to throw the ball, uh, where the Breakers could just do whatever they wanted. Really, it seemed like, and they just did a little bit better. They did it more efficiently. So defense is where 
uh, the Stallions have to step up. I know Scooby Wright was injured in week two, maybe not 100% just yet, but um, that's a key figure there. Um, no, uh, the, the Stallions will get it back together. I think they're still, when it's all said and done, the best team in the South, and they will play the Breakers again. That, that's not the last time those teams met. Um, and they are going to win. Feels like I'm repeating the exact thing I said with the Battlehawks and, and Defenders, huh? Mm -hmm. But this time I actually believe it. They're going to meet again. And uh, the Stallions are going to win that one. And they are, they are going to repeat as champions of the Southern Division. Ooh. I hope so. I think so. I believe it. They have the better quarterback. The still f MVP frontrunner. And just the bigger names. Jay Sternberger is a just perennial NFL player. A lot of NFL names in this roster. A lot of injuries. It was a slip up. A lot of injuries. That is true. But here they can replace him. Yeah, uh, Jamar Smith is out. You still have the best quarterback in the league on your <laughs> roster. Uh, yeah, you you know, got to count for something. Uh, you mentioned um, who did you mention being out? The linebacker, uh, uh, Scooby Wright, Scooby. right? Uh, so you actually have the advantage of Ruben Foster being injured. Also, he is not put on injured reserve or anything. But I noticed in that game last week against the Stars, yeah. he was injured. So, he did. He did get hurt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah did. Did you Didn't notice? know exactly what it was. Did he ever come I, I back saw, in the I game? Or it was late in the game. I don't know if he did. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I don't know if he did actually. Uh, it looked like he hurt his. Was it his hand? No, it was his, he. It's like some knee or ankle thing. Yeah, he was limping. Uh, yeah, I, I saw him limp that, off. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know yeah. if he came back in. I didn't actually read anything. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to check to see. But either yeah. way, that, that's an advantage for the Stallions right there also. I mean, that is their best player on the entire team, no doubt about it. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, he's been impact player. Whenever he's been active, he's played very well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But yes, I'm, I'm locking in the Stallions. Yeah, definitely. How are your power rankings? Well, uh, like I said, I, I think the Showboats may actually be the worst team in the league. I'm putting them at number eight right now, followed up by... A decision to make here. Um, yes, I, I will leave the the Maulers at number seven because you, that could be a fluke. It could just be a fluke that you got one over on the stars. Leaving them at number seven. Then we got the Gamblers coming in at number six, and I have dropped them all the way down to number five. That would be the Philadelphia Stars, followed by the Panthers, who were number two last week. But I am putting the Generals up at number three. Number two happens to be the Birmingham Stallions. And since the Breakers are absolutely undefeated, beating the Stallions, they have to be at number one right now. I agree with a lot of what you said. There's one thing I won't let you get off with okay. quite so easily. And that is, let me put the Houston Gamblers above your Philly Stars. Mm. Just one time, I'm going to put them at five, Stars at six. Simply, the Gamblers are third in their division, mm -hmm. the arguably stronger division. Stars are last, so you'd be glad I'm not putting them behind the Maulers because they just lost to the Maulers, and they're behind the Maulers in that division standings. By, by all means, anyone who doesn't know about the history of last season and what the stars did and who case cook is this would put the stars at seven here any like truly unbiased objective party would put philadelphia squarely at number seven uh in these power rankings so i'm putting him at six which i think is extremely fair other than that i agree with all your assessments stallions currently at two so you could argue the generals at two because they've been impressive but stars oh, at two cool. uh, stallions at two future number one again very soon just not this week because the record doesn't allow <laughs> it yeah but we will get there breakers are so much better than i ever thought they would be yes. like, I, I thought it was going to be another you know slightly above 500 season they're they're good you know one of the best uh half of uh, top half of teams in the league but i did not expect them to be that good and i did not expect west hills to be as dominant as he is but like i said last week john d filippo after the game came out and said yes he has the hot hand we're gonna ride him and they absolutely did and he is killing it best rb yeah. in the league so far absolutely plus you had the veteran quarterback who doesn't hasn't really lost a step mm -hmm. yeah dangerous team i agree 
Absolutely. Oh, and about the power rankings, uh, to be fair, I did pick the Gamblers to beat the Stars this week. Yep. So, uh, I will be changing that next week if my prediction comes true. But if your prediction comes true and the Stars do win, then my yeah. my rankings hold. We've all hedged our bets just a little bit with those yep. picks, which is, which is very fair. Do you have anything else to add for this week? I think that's it for this week. Okay, again, I'll stress it again. No XFL predictions this week because there is a break until next week where we have the championship defenders and uh, renegades, which we can already start thinking about this week, but no picks just yet. We're going to wait until the final set of news comes in next week before the championship game, which is going to be the 13th, I believe. Uh, or the, yeah, it's. Uh, sounds about 12, right. 13th. Yeah. 13th sounds right, right? Yeah, I think that's what it is. We will do that next week. Anyway, let us know your picks for the USFL. Uh, week 4 in the comments. What do you think about these games? Do you agree with our power rankings? If not, what would you change? Leave us a like, and we'll see you in the next one. Deuces. Check, check the scoreboard. Ha. Check.